Great. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today, wherever you are in the world. Um, we are very excited to talk about AIX and open source today. Um, before we jump into that, we've got some great presenters here. We have Carl Burnett, uh, who's one of our distinguished engineers in IBM Cognitive Systems, and Sanket Rathi, who is one of our senior technical staff members for IBM Systems. So. We know there's been interest in this topic, and uh, just as a reminder uh, to some housekeeping items, if you have questions, on the right-hand side, lower right-hand side, you should see an area to enter your question. Uh, we'll answer as many as we can as those questions come in, and then you know we'll have time at the end also for your questions. So Sanket, can you go to the next chart, please? able to advance great thank you very much so if you've attended any of our previous webcast series that we've been doing for our ISV community you've seen this chart before but it's a it's a good reminder and for those of you who are, are just joining us anew for this this webcast we launched a um, th this webcast series and also kind of more full-scale um, reach out partnership with with our ISV community because some of the feedback that we have gotten from our clients and you may be hearing the same thing from from your end as well they want us working together when we work together on our hardware software solutions uh, and we have a stronger partnership it helps us deliver better value to our clients whether it is in the totality of the solution whether it's around performance um, you know or some of the great features that we offer on the power platform so uh, that's one of the reasons why we we've launched this um, this this outreach to our ISV community you may have attended some of our previous webcasts as I mentioned before and so we'll continue this series for those of you who maybe didn't get an opportunity to attend previous webcasts, these are all being recorded. So we have a library of resources and materials for you to access. Some of them are listed here. For those of you have, who maybe have felt out of touch uh, with regard to you know, where we've been focused and driving investment in AIX and IBMI and how you know, those investments can help you grow your business, that was one of the first webcasts that we did. Your feedback is very important to us too. So we, we've also, through direct feedback from our ISV community and then some of the polls, and you'll have a chance to participate in another poll in this webcast, you've been giving us some great feedback on the topics that you want to hear about. So uh, IBM uh, Power Systems in Public Cloud was a very hot topic. Um, so we, we did that in January and uh, followed on by orchestration for hybrid cloud. Uh, obviously today, uh, upcoming topic is open source for AIX. So Carl and Sanka will we'll cover that today. We will also, we've had requests specifically for what we're doing around open source for IBM I. So we, we know that some of our ISV partners are focused on AIX as well as IBM I. So we'll have a dedicated webcast to dive into open source for IBM I coming up and registration will open up for that soon. The other feedback that we've gotten is um, interest in leveraging AI and how you can use that with, with AIX, AIX and IBM I um, applications. So you know, building on, on what our customers already have to be able to leverage the, the momentum and the value that AI brings to bear. Um, and another one that we are, are adding that we've gotten feedback about is working with our co-creation lab in IBM. I'll, at the end of the webcast, I'll cover this in a, um, in a, just a, uh, later on, but I'll, I'll cover some of the benefits of working with that, that group and with the, the co-creation lab. We've had some questions about how to leverage that um, and you know, what value does it bring to bear, how do you get started, et cetera. So we'll cover some of, of that at the end, as I said, but we're also planning to dedicate a full um, webcast on that so you can really understand uh, what's available to you um, as an ISV and how that can help you drive business um, uh, with your clients. 
we have monthly newsletters that are coming out in April, so you do need to opt in for those. So you can either reach out to me or you can reach out to Linda. There's also an opt-in, but um, at, at the end we'll do a poll and you can opt in that way as well. Um, for those of you who are interested in a one-on-one -on -one discussion about AIX with open source or any other topic, any, for example, any of the, the topics listed above, um, about public cloud or, or you know, you're, you're eager to have an AI discussion and don't want to wait until the webcast, please reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to either help you or, or get you routed to the right people. So bottom line is um, we're, we're eager to engage with you, work with you. You're, you're an important part of our, our business partner ecosystem. Um, we're eager to work with you on our joint clients to deliver value, and we've got lots of support on that journey. So I will cover a bit more of that in detail, um, but I know everybody's eager to jump into the, uh, the AIX for open source content. So let me turn it over to Carl now. Uh, overall strategy. And this include um, open technology that comes from out of IBM by other communities, um, say they for ads, um, other download sites, for example, bullfreeware.com, and even you know some tools that have been contributed to AIX from other parts of IBM. A good example of that is the you know the Enmon related set of technology um, that, that has come from one of our you know members of IBM Lab Services, um, but. We've also significantly increased our own investments in AIX development around uh, open technology, and that's what we're going to focus on today, is to take you through our approach to how we bring open technology to AIX, how we make it consumable um, by our you know, clients and ISVs and other consumers of AIX itself. And to do that, I'm going to introduce um, one of our lead engineers within AIX development, Sankat Rati. Sankat leads our efforts around uh, bringing open technology to AIX and uh, making it available to clients and, and creating a communications forum um, to engage and interact with the users of open technology on AIX. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Sankat and he's gonna take you through the rest of the session. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Gina. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me okay. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, open source offering on AIX and to start with introduction to what we call AIX Toolbox for Linux application. So it is more of AIX Toolbox for open source packages. So on the, on the top of this slide, you see there is a link which actually takes you to the our web page where we have more than 250 open source packages. And these open source packages are compiled for AIX and are available in RPM format. So we are, we are doing heavy investment and working with our customers, users, and our, according to our strategy, what important packages we should bring to AIX and that is where we would need your help also if you are using any open source technology and you would like that to be available or you would like that to be made available on AIX, uh, we would like to know that as well. So this AIX toolbox for Linux application or this, uh, what we say in short form AIX toolbox, it has around more than 250 open source packages. Uh, we generally uh, uh, update these packages or some of the most important packages once a year but we also take care very well about the security vulnerabilities because we all are aware that there are always often security vulnerabilities in open source packages. So we regularly monitor security vulnerabilities on these packages and we, as and when community release the security fixes, we incorporate them and re-release from our toolbox. Uh, now these packages generally uh, on the RPM packages, there is a dependency matrix and it's hard to actually install because there are so many dependency and hence we have also provided yum for AIX and we will talk in detail about yum in the further slides. So, so this is the introduction about the AIX uh, open source toolbox. 
and and this slide actually gives a snapshot of what I was talking about the AX toolbox web page. So on this you can find uh, there is a yum.sh script at the top, which actually if you will run on an AIX system, it will configure yum for AIX, will automatically set yum repository. There is a link for the support page uh, for the toolbox. There is a license tab and the and then different tab about uh, the toolbox overview and other things. So, so I would request everyone to go at least and visit this web page and see what all are what all open source packages are available on AIX. One thing uh, on this site generally we uh, we post only the latest packages, but it does not mean the older versions are not available. Some of the older versions are available in our repository, and when you will configure YUM, you can see all the versions available for a particular package on AIX. Okay, so uh, this is just to give you a feeling that what kind of packages are available. It is a very small set of packages from the toolbox. So, so you, we have different kind of packages, the open source languages like GCC, Go, uh, Python, Perl, Ruby, all of the major open source langu languages we have made available on AIX. Lot of foundational packages like HTTP, Samba, PHP, and YUM, these are also made available. Very common open source tools like WGET, Curl, which very frequently people use, and some cloud related tools like Cloud Init and Swift Client to access Swift Storage, Ansible and Salt. So, so this is a very small set of lists, but I just wanted to put it here so that people understand what kind of open source packages we are talking. And also we have some open source databases like MariaDB, Postgres SQL, and we are also working on MySQL, uh, latest MySQL. So that will be made available by end of this month. So, so we have very vast variety of open source packages available on AIX toolbox. And these packages are actually available for AIX 7.1, 7.2, uh, different releases, which can be made use for uh, customers and for ISVs. So if your, your software requires any open source package supports, so you can actually use these packages from AIX toolbox and can run with your software. Okay, so as I was saying uh, in the previous slide, the RPM has this dependency matrix, one RPM and generally in open source packages in open source world, that's what also happens that when someone develops a utility or a package, they generally use other open source packages and these all open source packages has different package or different RPM. And that's why these open source packages create this dependency matrix, which is very difficult sometimes very difficult to resolve because when you will actually get one image of RPM, it will like ask for another dependency and then furthermore. And YUM is a way to resolve that dependency matrix on RPM packages. So it's a package manager for RPM, which allows this automatic installation, update and dependency management for the RPM packages. So uh, we were hearing, we have made this AX toolbox available for our customer for some time, but we were hearing this pain from the customers that the RPM dependency is, a, is, is not easy to resolve, and hence we made YUM available for AX. Now, YUM on AX works very same way how it works on any RPM based distro like RHEL or Fedora or CentOS. So it's, it's worked very much similar to this. And uh, all these packages are actually supported through YUM. So we have a centralized repository or the, the YUM repository. So once you will actually install YUM for AIX, by default, the repository will set for the IBM repository, which is on which is on an IBM hosted site. But in some cases, if you do not have access to internet from your AIX box or outbound access, you can also create a local YUM repository. And we have published some articles how you can create a local YUM repository for AX toolbox packages. So, and, and this is what generally followed in Linux distros also that you, you can create your local YUM repository and you can have repo sync where the, your local repository will always be in sync with the, with the uh, uh, distros repository and in this case, AX toolbox repositories. So, so all of these 
things are available on AIX as well. We have certain developer works articles and these scripts which will help you to configure YUM in better way or in easy way on your system. Okay, so uh, now this AX toolbox, all these RPM packages available from AX toolbox, they are not supported through the regular IBM support or regular AX support channel, that means using Salesforce cases or PMRs. But we support all of these tools or all of these packages through our a forum, which is, host, which is monitored by my team. And we are very responsive in answering or helping our users in any queries or any issues. So any of the package is not working or in your environment it's having issues in installation or any kind of issues you can always reach out to us using this forum and in this forum you can also request if you are looking if you are looking for any new package or or any new enhancement on the toolbox we also publish whenever we update a new package or whenever we introduce a new package on toolbox that information is also published through this forum only Apart from that, all the security vulnerability fixes, which we regularly monitor and provide the fixes for these packages are also posted here. So, so this is the place where you will get most of the information. This is the place where you can share your experience also. So it is a, it is a pretty good place to start with uh, if you have any questions or any issues, or, or you can just subscribe to this forum. You will get notification about the new uh, post on the toolbox like new package update or security fixes and you can also see how customers are using the open source on AX. Uh, so here we are talking about what are the current activities uh, AX development team is doing for open source specifically focused for AX toolbox. So one of the thing I was talking we, we have this mandate like we update most of the important packages once a year. Apart from that, we regularly look for security vulnerabilities in any package and provide fix as and when community release. So that is our regular activity and that we are always uh, working on. Apart from that, we are working on Python 3 default for AX toolbox because the Python 2 has gone out of support in end of last year, by end of last year. Now we are moving everything to Python 3. That means we have SALT and Ansible available. We are making them Python 3, available, uh, Python 3 compatible. Uh, YUM is also Python 2 based. So we are actually going for YUM or DNFs for Py with Python 3. Uh, we are working on the some of the important packages. One of them is MySQL. We are going to make it available by end of this quarter. That means within 10, 15 days, it should be available on AX toolbox. Uh, we are also working on lightweight data shipper from B, like Beats, file beat, audit beat, and metric beat. These will also be become available by end of this quarter. So, so these are certain, certain things. One of the other things that we are working is we are making GCC 64 bit uh, so that some of the cases we have seen right now, uh, GCC on AX is 32 bit, but when there is a huge data or when the, 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 the package is very big, we have seen some time it run out of memory. So that's why we are making GCC 64 bit available. Now we will be shipping both 32 bit GCC and 64 bit GCC in our package uh, and, and default will be 32. But if someone wants to use a 64 bit GCC, they can still use it will be part of package. So we are working on that. Uh, another important thing that we are working. So there are certain other open source repository for AIX. Uh, bullfreeware.com and pearls.org and uh, uh, many times we have seen that means now now it has resolved very much but many times in past we have seen that if someone install packages from these different repository on their AX system then they don't they do not work very well together so so we are working with these bullfreeware and pearls site to create this compatibility across the packages as part of that we have, have a strategy to use libraries in a certain way and the naming nomenclature of those libraries in a certain way so that they will not create this conflict of 
library or library is not found if it comes from different sources. So we are very much there, very, uh, we have achieved very much compatibility with bullfreeware.com. We are in discussion with Pulse, Michael Pulse site, and, and we will achieve the compatibility there as well. Sorry. So, so that's all uh, about the uh, AX toolbox and open source. Uh, and now I will try to touch a little bit on uh, AI part and how we can leverage AI for AIX and what all we have done uh, for uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning for AIX. One of the things that we have done last year is we have made these important machine learning Python based packages available on AIX, uh, NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, um, Pandas. So all of these can run on AIX now. Uh, they are not available from AIX toolbox because these packages changes very frequently and we are not providing them in RPM format. But what can be done is you can install Python 3 from AIX toolbox and using PIP, you can install these packages from the community. The reason why we did that way, because as I said, these packages are changing very frequently. This is a booming area and we will not be able to provide always the latest packages from toolbox. So what we are doing is we are having a test setup where we always make sure that the what community is releasing is working on AIX. And to do that, sometimes there are issues. We provide the patch back to the community and community integrate those patches for AIX. So all of these packages which are listed here works on AIX. Apart from that, certain more packages are there, but I just listed the important one. To run these packages, especially specifically NumPy and SciPy, you need Blast library, which is basic algebra uh, library. And those are made available from AIX toolbox. So we have open Blast and uh, liblapec uh, libraries available from AIX toolbox. Uh, and there is a developer box article also published how step-by-step -step guide, how you can install these uh, machine learning packages on AIX. So, so this guide, which is down here uh, and link down here, it actually gives you the step-by-step -step how you can install these machine learning packages on AX and how you can build your model, how you can run a, a Python-based machine learning model on AX. So uh, this site talks about uh, inferencing capabilities, not the model building, but if you already have a trained model, what are the different ways you can use that for scoring for AIX. So there are two ways uh, uh, possible. One is you can have a Linux LPAR on a Power VM system side by side to AIX. And our Power VM Linux supports most of the machine learning frameworks, deep learning frameworks, or AI frameworks available. So you can train your model anywhere and you can bring that model to this Linux LPAR and install the install the uh, Power AI or WMLC on this Linux LPAR, and you can accommodate your model there. And after that, you can export the APIs from the Linux LPAR, which can be used by AX LPAR. And the communication between Linux LPAR and AX LPAR is using T hype, so it's a secure and very fast. So this is one way of uh, doing the inferencing of any model and if you want to leverage that for AIX. Uh, I will talk in a little bit more in detail in the next slide about this model. The second model is doing inferencing directly on AIX. Now for this, one of the example we have is S2O driverless AI. S2O driverless AI is a, is a platform where you can actually do the driverless models training and once the model is trained, the, the model can be exported in Java format, and that model can be run on AIX, and Java and C applications can use those APIs for scoring. So this is one of the very, very good model, or this is the one of the very good way of doing inferencing on AIX with very low latency because it is not uh, Python or it is not uh, uh, any other frameworks is directly in Java and uh, your Java applications or CC application can directly use these APIs to inference the or score uh, using that model. So these are the two models available for inferencing. Uh, 
So let's talk a little more about uh, the inferencing using Linux LPAR. So uh, what, what can be done here is uh, we have WMLC, which we say Watson Machine Learning Community Edition. It is a set of uh, open, it is set of AI frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, all the Python-based machine learning, and all of them available in our Conda repository. All of these can be installed on the Linux LPAR, which is sitting side by side to AIX, and you can run any model on this Linux LPAR, which is trained anywhere. And then you can export these REST APIs using the uh, virtual Ethernet or VNIC to the uh, AIX LPAR, which is sitting next. And this AIX LPAR can use these API REST APIs uh, to do the scoring, which is the scoring or the model inferencing is running on Linux. For to showcase this, we have actually provided a sandbox where all the tools and all the code is available. And the link for a developer box article where actually in detail it talks about how you can actually set up this, where is the sandbox, and there is a YouTube video also in this developer box. So, so all of this is available and you can actually go and explore this. Uh, there is a inferencing directly on AIX. You can use the Linux LPAR to do inferencing. There are Python tools, Python machine learning tools available for AIX. So, so this is the AI story for AIX, and and we are working towards bringing more technology for AIX. So, uh, I think uh, I will pause here. I think that's all I have to to showcase about AIX open source and what. What are the different things we are doing in AI? So I will uh, I will take the questions at end and I will pass on to Gina. Great, thank you, Sanket. Um, and I I do see that there are some questions and some dialogue going in, on in the Q and A area, um, as well as I, it looks like um, some of you are providing some input on on open source packages that you would like to see or maybe have had a challenge. Finding. So feel free to put more um, <laughs> if you've got some feedback into that Q&A box. <clears throat> it's very helpful. We we capture that as part of this webcast. So you know we can certainly take that and and we'll have that information that you're providing. Um, and just a reminder, if you do have some additional questions, to go ahead and put those into. And as Sanket said, we'll we'll cover those at the end of our our webcast here. So with the time we have left, so with each, with each of the, the webcasts, we want to make sure we're sharing some information with you, kind of one about how you can leverage the technology that we have available um, to our ISV community, and then secondly, um, opportunities for additional partnerships. So we talk about this on each of our, our webcasts. Um, so there are a number of different ways that we can partner with you and help you on your journey you know, um, for those of you who support power systems platforms. Um, and one of those is around hardware access and application modernization. So um, we offer free access to power systems hardware. There's a, a link um, in this chart that the charts will be, uh, you'll, you'll have these available for download. So that will take you to, there's also more information on the next chart where you can access or request access to power systems along with the application modernization workshops, which we can do as part of our co-creation lab or even just a, you know, a technical review discussion. Um, we're also happy to do complimentary AI assessments. Uh, Sanket talked, gave you a really good introduction, I think, to what you can leverage from an AI perspective. Um, we understand that all of our ISV partners are going to be in a different place, you know, with their journey toward AI. And um, so if, if having a one-on-one -on -one discussion will help, we're happy to do that. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning of our webcast today, we will be doing a deeper dive on the AI, AI technologies um, that you can leverage, whether it's, you know, it's a hardware system designed for AI, um, some of the technologies that we have in IBM or even the partnerships that we have um, in the software ecosystem with, with AI um, application providers that you can leverage as well. Uh, and Sankat mentioned one of those, for example, uh, H2O. 
Uh, there are also market development funds available um, to do joint events. I know we're doing most of the, the events digitally now, um, but there's an opportunity for us to work with you um, so that you can participate in events that we have with an IBM that are, are focused on um, power systems. Um, there's also joint uh, opportunity to work on joint collateral. We have worldwide technical universities in all of our regions now. Some of those have gone, you know, digital, um, and there are a number of face-to-face -face, uh, events planned for the fall that you can jointly work with us on. Um, what we're also planning to do for those of you, and I, I would imagine we have people joining us um, from worldwide. I can't see exactly where all of you are coming from, but with those technical universities, we are planning to do ISV summits, ISV technical summits. So for those of you who are located in, um, you know, maybe not in the U.S. Um, and other parts of the world, there's an opportunity for you to participate in discussions with our subject matter experts about what we're doing and, you know, even one-on-one -on -one discussion face-to-face. Uh, -face. At least that's the plan for now. Um, and then lastly, I just want to mention from a go-to-market standpoint, um, you know, we all win when we can get out to, to clients and share the joint value that we're, we're bringing to the market. Um, so there's an opportunity for us, obviously, to, to engage with our, our, um, our sales teams um, who are located worldwide um, to provide tech talks, um, demos, and, and trainings, both for our sales force as well as our mutual clients. Um, partnership videos and webcasts. Um, so there's an opportunity and, and what we would be interested in doing is start spotlighting some of our ISV partners. Um, so if there's an interest in doing that, there's, a, there's an opportunity to get out to our, our mutual clients and, and you know, educate them on what we're doing together. And then of course, opportunity to, to co-sell um, our hardware, our joint hardware software solutions. Um, Sanket, I think you might still have the, oh, no, I think I just advanced the charts. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, and it advanced to the next chart here. It did on my end, so hopefully you can see that on your end as well. Um, so as I mentioned, if you are interested in getting access to power systems hardware, uh, it's a, we have it available 24 by, by seven access. There's also support available. Um, the link is provided here and you know you can use that to do testing um, you know there are virtual resources available for you um, up to 14 days um, so and obviously if you need more than that then, then we're happy to work with you on that um, so the link is here um, so feel free to if, if you would like to get access that's the way to do it and then I just wanted to come back to the co-creation lab for just a moment here so this is a free one-on-one -on -one workshop that we're offering for our ISV partners, and it's a chance to dive into a number of different things. Um, it's tailored to what you know what your current needs are, and that might be how do I modernize my application? Um, Sanket took us through you know open source for AIX. Maybe you're um, interested in incorporating some of the open source technology or discussing how you could do that with your application. Um, there is also an opportunity to work to, you know, to, to kind of walk through the solution relative to maybe the competition you're facing in the marketplace and, you know, to assess and um, get some input on, on the competitiveness of that, that offering as well. Um, we've done some work sh workshops with our ISV partners that have been very specifically focused on an individual deal, right, that have been uh, resulted in, um, in winning, right, for both our ISV partner and for IBM. And we'll have some examples of that when we do the, the deeper dive, the webcast on the co-creation lab. Um, so those are just some of the you know, again, it's tailored to, to what would be most helpful for you, but we work with you side by side to create strategies. Um, again, whether it's related to your specific application or, um, or you know, even a client that, that we're working to, to deliver value to. So that's a bit about the co-creation lab. 
Um, now, finally, <laughs> uh, we'd like to ask all of you for some feedback. Um, it, obviously, you know, we want to, it, it's a little bit difficult sometimes with a webcast and we've got the chat, but we also want to make sure that we're getting your valuable input on a number of different subjects, but in this case, um, AI open, AIX open source technology um, that you're using with your software. We have some other additional questions. So the polling is open. You'll see that in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so I'll give you a few minutes just to fill that out. I think we have five questions. Um, and again, you're, please take time to fill that out because we're very interested in your feedback and, um, and using that to guide our product direction and, um, and roadmap as well. So we'll give you just a few minutes to fill that out. Not to be a distraction, but one of the things we were talking about doing is to have the Jeopardy music play during the poll. So, um, so we're not all sitting here in silence. <laughs> we do need music. Okay, so that polling will leave open for a few more minutes, or a couple more minutes, I should say. Hey, Gina, this is Carl and from AIX Development. Uh, maybe just a comment I would make. Um, so we're definitely very interested in trends in our ISV community where you are you know, potentially starting to look at using open source technology as part of your solution or you are becoming um, you know, dependent on open source technology to provide your solution. Um, please feel free, as Gina has, um, you know, offered to, you know, um, to, you know, to reach out to um, our power team and our development team for, you know, continuing dialogue. We're definitely very interested in, in where um, our ISV community is going with open source technology. Excellent. Thanks, Carl, for that reminder. And on that note, we have uh, just about 40 seconds left in our, our poll. Um, we did want to save time at the end for, for questions and Q&A. Um, I know some of you have put some questions in the, um, in the Q&A section also. So we'll, we'll get through as many as we can there. And I think just got about 10 seconds left on polling. Hopefully we gave all of you enough time to get through that. Okay, it looks like polling is now closed. So Mike, thank you for that. Um, so before we get into Let's see, before we get into some of the questions, um, we, we didn't have a polling question on this, but um, you know, we, we are very interested if, um, so in the, you'll see in the right-hand corner, there are several, several icons. There's one that looks like a hand or a high five, as I like to call it. Um, and so since we didn't have a, a polling question available there, um, We'd like to understand, you know, how many, um, you know, how many of you are are um, interested or starting to hear about or use um, Ansible in some of your environments. Uh, this is a new thing we're kind of trying here. So if you, since we didn't have a polling question on this, if you can just raise your hand so that we can see how many of our attendees, um, we should be able to see how many hands go up. Hopefully you're able to find it. Okay, I see at least one hand that's gone up. So again, if how many of you are starting to use um, in, your, in your organization, um, starting to discuss or maybe already using Ansible today? I see one hand that's been raised. Okay, we just wanted to get kind of a quick gauge here of how many people um, in our ISV community are, are starting to, to look at that. 
Okay. I know this is kind of a new curve we've thrown at people here. So, okay, I see a number of hands that have gone up. Um, okay, excellent. And feel free to put in the QA too if you have some comments about that. That's probably a good way to gauge as well because we do take a record of the the, um, the Q&A here. Okay, so let me get, thank you for, for participating in that. Um, again, we kind of are doing that a little bit ad hoc and, and wanted to get some feed, early feedback on from you on that. Okay, so let's move to a couple of the questions here. Um, the first one is, um, are, are the open source packages, um, uh, are they available for, for all versions of, of AIX? Um, or, you know, what is the particular strategy for that? Which versions of AIX will the open source um, packages be available on? Yeah, so, uh... We generally use the AIX binary compatibility into consideration and build the packages. Right now we are building packages for AIX 6.1. Those works with AIX 6.1, AIX 7.1, and AIX 7.2. Uh, but as AIX 6.1 is going out of support, we are soon moved to AIX 7.1 and 7.2 only. Uh, plus, uh, uh, there are certain exceptions to that is like like example GCC, uh, which for every release we have to build a separate version because it uses the underlying uh, operating system uh, uh, ecosystem. So, so most of the packages works on AX 6.1, 7.1, and 7.2. The same package works. Uh, there are some other exceptions are like GoLang, GoLang, and the Beat set of software like or the software which are written in Go. Those will only be available for AX 7.2. Okay, thank you, Sanket. Okay, um, one other question. I think you may have mentioned this before, but just for clarity, um, where where should um, those who are attending this webcast or who will listen to the recording in the future, where should they go if they need open source software support? So uh, I think uh, I have mentioned uh, in one of my chart. So there is a AX open source software forum, which is right now hosted on developer box. And I saw there is a question that someone went to that site and it says uh, that it is going, uh, it's sunsetting on my end of March. So we are working towards migrating that site to another home inside IBM. Uh, but this is the place where you can actually go for any support for open source. Uh, related to AIX toolbox or any other generic open source query you have about AIX, you can always post it there. So that's the place where you can go for uh, any open source support on AIX. Okay, thanks. Thanks for reiterating that, Sanket. I um, I I know you covered it, but since there was a question in the Q and A section, I just wanted to make sure that we, um, that those who are attending you know, we're, we're clear on that and, and actually where to go um, in the future. Okay, excellent. All right, I'm looking at the questions and Carl, I have to say you have done an excellent job staying on top of those and the, the good, there's some really good discussion in the Q&A um, section. I'm just doing a quick read through to make sure that we haven't missed any here. Um, and Carl, I know you've been reading through that. Um, Sanket, it sounds like you have as well. Is there anything that I missed um, with regard to questions that we should make sure we answer before we end our webcast? I think we've been able to cover them pretty well, Gina, and, and thank everyone Excellent. very much for your questions and comments. Yeah, that's that's great. Really good feedback. One of the most valuable things of doing uh, related to doing these webcasts is getting all your great feedback. Um, and again, I do want to mention, um, obviously, once we end the web, the, the webcast, you know, there's still an opportunity for you to provide feedback uh, to us. Um, Carl, Sanket, and, and I all included our email addresses on the title of the, the webcast chart. You can feel free to reach out to us with specific questions. And again, I know this is one of the polling questions. Um, hopefully you had enough time to fill out the polling questions, but um, in the event you know, even after the webcast that you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one discussion, 
um, with us or are interested in any of the, the opportunities for additional partnership that we talked about, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we're very happy to talk to you and support you. You're an important part of our community. And uh, with that, I think we've gotten through. I'm just going to double check to make sure there are no other questions here. Uh, I do want to thank everybody for your time today. Um, and I think, Michael, we are, are ready to, to go ahead and end the webcast.